Good afternoon. There's been a rather nice metaphor today, hasn't there, for marketing, particularly for those of you at the back. Your message needs to be heard. So we're going to cover a few things here which will help you to do that. Um, I was speaking at an event the other day and I went round and I found someone, that was somebody's notebook. So that was a real notebook uh, for taking notes on my talk. Uh, none of you got one of those, I think. So it'd be great if we all had huge budgets that we could throw at our market and lead generation like some of the big boys have got, yeah? Um, it's very exciting. I love collecting pieces of marketing that really get people's attention. Um, and in many ways, we're limited by our own imaginations in terms of how we get our message heard and how we get out there. A little bit of creativity helps us to differentiate ourselves. With the best will in the world, you can go to any financial advisor's website around the UK and they all say the same thing. We really do need to try and differentiate ourselves. That's not our faults, really. You know, we're in a regulated industry and in regulated industries, by nature, we all have to follow the same rule book. So it is quite difficult to differentiate. It's Father's Day on, on uh, Sunday. I managed to find this one. So creativity at its best is really exciting and does get people's attention. So fundamentally, we are going through a period of change right now, and there always has been change. And it's just something I want to focus on for a little while before we get, because it's important that it's relevant to where we are today and our marketing. You know, back in the day before the internet, I think, you know, well, the first course that people would go to would be uh, Yellow Pages. And we would go to trade shows, we'd go to conferences, we'd go to networking events. Business for financial advisors came from a variety of different sources. What's really interesting to see is some of the most successful financial advisors when it comes to marketing and lead generation still do this stuff. We've got lazy because of the internet in many ways. We kind of, we put our websites out there. We kind of sit back, box ticked. I've got my website. I'm in the world of, of e-commerce. No, you're not. In many ways, your website needs to be promoted as well to drive the people to it. So, you know, that was before the internet. Then around 1983, uh, some of you might remember Lotus. Uh, Lotus uh, 1, 2, 3 coming on board. It really changed things in terms of how we could operate as financial advisors. Really helped us to look at that data that we've got. Uh, we could create some fancy graphs which clients could enjoy looking at. We could manipulate the data, which is really good and it would make us much more productive. So although technology comes along and it scares us a little bit to some extent, it actually in the long run really does help us. So along comes 1993 and we haven't looked back. Well, we do tend to look back. The internet changed everything in many ways. And the whole point of the internet in many ways, it was to make it easier for people to find financial advisors. But in fact, as technology has moved on, we all know this, there's so much noise out there on the internet now, in many ways, it's actually harder than ever to get seen and to be visible and to differentiate ourselves. So we need to think about a few things. This is a really interesting graph as well. It kind of crept up on us. It was a pivotal moment in the history of the internet in about April, May, 2010, when the number of visits to search engines was overtaken by the number of visits to social media. And in many ways, a lot of people these days use social media as their search engine. If any of you are on, like, say, a local Facebook group, you'll always see people saying, hey, we just moved to the area. Can anyone recommend a vet? Can anyone recommend a childminder? So human beings, although we have access to the knowledge online through technology, we would still rather ask another human being, albeit through the medium of technology, for their opinion on where to go. So right now, there are people on social media asking, can anybody recommend a financial advisor? So we need to be visible to those particular people. So moving even further forward, we were all told that we really needed to be on Google. If you weren't on Google, you didn't exist, used to be the phrase. We can now think about really, perhaps we need to be even more visible than just on Google. Maybe we need to be on Spotify. Maybe we need to be on uh, Amazon and iTunes. That's really quite easy to do for financial advisors, but it's the next step that we really need to be thinking about. So despite all that technology that's underpinning kind of everything we do, at the heart of it is you guys and girls. Real professionalism that's getting more professional as every single day, day goes by, real hands-on 
quality services. The trick is getting across the value of the expertise, the credibility and the knowledge and the expertise that you have. But now we arrive at another technological moment. We are literally standing at a crossroads where that traditional hands-on professional approach is meeting face to face with something that can replicate us online as well. How on earth do we deal with that? One thing I would say, we're going to just briefly touch on AI, is that please, please do not ignore AI. It's not something that's coming down the track in a couple of years' time. We'll start paying attention to it then. It's been here for about a year already, and it really does need to be embraced. We can talk more about AI in due course. Just, just dip into it, learn about it, use it, test it out. Don't use it with client data or anything like that, but just learn what it is. There's all sorts of newsletters that you can get, which will uh, te take a business card afterwards and I'll send you a link to some newsletters that will keep you up to date on what's happening in the world of AI. Now, I think already then you can see that there is no one size fits all approach to marketing. Although I've just said that every financial advisor looks the same on their website, you are all completely different. And it's that differentiation that is the bit that's gonna win you new clients when it comes out there. So I've done some research with a guy out in the States called Michael Kitzes. We've looked at the different types of marketing that works for different types of financial advisors. Typically, the financial advisors, top performing financial advisors around the world, the top strategies that they're using, typically referrals, but they don't just hope the referral comes in. They have a formal written down referral strategy. They have a plan. If you would say nothing away from what I say today, if you can master how to get more referrals, you'll never ever need to worry about marketing again, but there's a trick to it. And again, take a business card and I'll show you a resource where I do like a whole workshop on how to get more referrals without even trying to be quite honest. Professional introducers, writing books, seminars from all financial advisors around the world in whatever discipline they do, the most successful financial advisors around the world all have one thing in common. They do seminars and webinars, and they educate consumers. They find ways to get in front of people so that they can see the whites of your eyes and communicate their expertise. Guess what? People buy people. Always have done, always will do. Even in this high-tech world that we're in right now, people buy people, and seminars are a brilliant way to move that. I won't go through the whole list. For financial advisors, if you want a low-risk strategy, uh, maybe you're struggling a bit, maybe you need a bit of help, or maybe you're brand new, the things on the right are the things that are really worth focusing on. Get those referrals and that introduction strategy working. Go to networking events. If, you don't, if you're not comfortable with networking events, learn how to network. Again, take a business card. I've got a whole training on how to be a better networker. LinkedIn is an absolute powerhouse of opportunity for financial advisors. Yet most financial advisors have never been trained how to use it. Just like any other bit of software that you have. Any software that you get into your business, unless you have training on it, you'll never see the real benefits. Get training on LinkedIn. I've got some of that if you want it as well. It's all for free. One of the best possible things you could do is get video testimonials on your website. Real clients. Get in touch with all your clients and say, we'd like just to do a couple of video testimonials or video comments that we stick on our website. Most won't be comfortable doing that, but you'll get one or two who say, yeah, I'm more than happy to do that. When you see real people sitting in their own home on their own sofa saying, do you know when Mary Jones, financial advisor, came into our lives, it was like a breath of fresh air. It was a weight off our shoulders. When people visiting your website see stuff like that, it is utterly irresistible. Get video testimonials on your website. And there's all sorts of other things that you could do as well. Uh, Lead Tech, we're talking about gathering data, scorecards, quizzes, and assessment tools on your website, a great way of gathering data from people. Okay, moving on. Some people might be thinking, though, but hold on, if I invest time and money and energy into this, you know, what if it doesn't work? Well, the things in green are actually things that are very low cost of failure. If it doesn't work for you, it's cost you nothing, if not next to nothing. So all those things that are worth, I can see people taking photos. Again, take a business card and I'll make sure, just get in touch and I'll make sure you get a copy of the slides. Um, referrals, I just want to pick up on three of the things we've been talking about. So referrals is, it's just 
a no-brainer, okay? Learn how to do it. Now, a lot of people, I think in, in this country, we've got this kind of, kind of vibe going on. Maybe it's not quite a done thing to ask people for referrals. Or what if people said no? We have this kind of vibe about us. Referral, really, it should be an absolute joy and a pleasure for a client to want to introduce you to one of their friends or colleagues. They would naturally, they should naturally want to do that. There is a trick to doing it. And one of the things that, that is worth thinking about, it's a kind of new skill that you need to, next client meeting, look for all those little signs that the person sitting in front of you is experiencing value. If they go, oh yeah, I get it, that's interesting, hadn't heard that before, those are subtle signs that they are getting value from you. And you want to try and make a note of everything they do that gives you a signal that they're getting value from you. And towards the end of the meeting, and again, we haven't really got time to go into, this, into detail, you can remind them of the value they've been receiving. And you can politely suggest to them, oh, maybe do you have any friends that could get the same value and the same benefit from talking to us? And they very, very quickly start turning around and go, yeah, I can think of Fred Smith or Mary Jones, more than happy to do that. It is about helping people help. You've got to help them uh, as you do right now, but look out for those little signs where they're experiencing value from them. Um, we hear a lot about content marketing. The whole point of content marketing, writing blogs, putting out videos, maybe doing a podcast is to educate and yes, entertain. Where content marketing goes wrong is where we try to, where we're actually doing it for the wrong reasons. We're deliberately putting it out in the expect, in, you know, in the hope that someone will say, oh yeah, I want to, want to work with these people. You know, the worst kind of networkers are people who go to networking events and they put a business card on every seat. That's not networking. The best type of networkers are the people who go to a networking event and they have a conversation with someone in the expectation of getting absolutely nothing in return. Networking is about giving. And if you're doing any content marketing, it's about give your expertise, put it out there. Every single one of you in this room has got expertise, credibility, professionalism. Share your knowledge. It doesn't mean say they're going to take the knowledge and go and do it themselves. They can't do it themselves. It's about putting quality content out there. So examples of quality content that educates and informs people, white papers, special reports, uh, client case studies are absolutely fantastic. They work all the time. Personalized content, that's where you use AI to take the expertise you've got and rewrite it specifically for individual clients as well. Webinars are great. Uh, they work really well. Any kind of courses, I'm starting to see more and more financial advisors now creating their own courses on particular topics around personal finance. And guess what? They sell those courses as well. There's a variety of different platforms you can do that. Podcasts is fantastic to see more and more advisors now uh, creating podcasts. We're starting to see it in the later life space as well, which is really good. And yes, you can write a book. Right now, I'm mentoring half a dozen financial advisors through writing their own book. A book doesn't have to be that thick with dragons and maps all over the front of it. A book can be that thick as well. But my goodness, writing your own book is going to be the best business card that you will ever give away to anybody. You can write your own book. You just need to follow the process. I say to advisors, you should be putting on seminars. Advisors go, yeah, I agree with that. But how do we get bums on seats? It's a process. Follow the process. They'll all turn up. Even the presentation has a process as well. Follow the process. You'll do that. Same with writing a book. There's a process to writing the book. Follow the process. A book comes out the other end. This is not content marketing. There are a lot of people who have you believe, a lot of marketing people have you believe, well, that's what you should be doing right now. You should be putting content, sharing every aspect of your life, day and night, everywhere, all of the time. Utter nonsense. Don't let anyone tell you you should be doing that. It's really more about identifying who's my ideal client. I'd love to do an exercise right now, but we haven't got time, where you actually write down what a perfect dream ideal client would look like. And once you've identified what that is, where in that universe do they hang out? And then put content in that particular direction. You really do not need to be putting content everywhere all of the time. One thing I would urge you thinking about is this concept of a value ladder. It's the process at which you help people to get to know you and your expertise and your credibility and gradually bring them into your world. 
So for example, many dentists have a value ladder. Many dentists these days will start by giving away free teeth cleaning. My dad was a dentist. Uh, he said to me, being a dentist is very unprofitable, particularly in the NHS. He said, what we want people to do is to spend the big money on the cosmetic stuff up the top. But to get people to trust you enough, they need to, you need to get them in the building. So many dentists need to do free teeth cleaning, even teeth whitening. In my dad's day, teeth whitening was at the top of the list. So think about your own business. What, could, what value ladder could you create to do that? Um, I mentioned video testimonials. I just wanted to show you a screenshot. Um, Jones Hill um, have retired recently, but I wanted to show you they've got some video testimonials of clients. And these were on the home page of their website. And you even you just needed to watch one video and you were absolutely hooked. There was no way you would ever go to another financial advisor. So if you worry about differentiation and getting your message out there, get some video testimonials. If you're worried about a budget, well, uh, you can even do it on your own mobile phone or you can hire some professionals like the guys at the back to do it, do it for you. But I cannot tell you enough how powerful video testimonials from really clients are uh, on the top of your list. Um, now, if any of you are interested, I've got a book out there. I've got to promote the book, obviously. But if you'd like a free copy of the book uh, in PDF form, take a business card um, and join my advisor growth community and you'll get a free copy of that as well. You'll get a free copy of my LinkedIn book, uh, How to Generate Leads from LinkedIn, uh, my big book, Marketing Lead Gen, and a whole bunch of other training on there, which will really, really help you. So the whole bunch, there's hours and hours and hours of lead generation and marketing training in that community. It's seven pounds a month, okay? But look what you get uh, in exchange. Um, if you want to go straight to it, just scan that or take the business card and there's a copy of that code on the business card as well. And I just want to finish by let's take this technology one step further uh, because technology is here all the time and I know it can be a little bit scary sometimes, um, but we've got to really try and embrace it. AI, if you ignore AI, it will be a problem for you, okay? It really will. But if your next door neighbor, if the financial advisor next door to you is using AI and you're not, they have a significant advantage over you, not least of which through productivity. Okay, so imagine you could have an AI version of you on your website. So I've recently launched an AI version of me um, as an experiment to see, to see how it's going, okay? And we all know how bad chatbots are, yeah? We've all been on bank chatbots or we all tried to get through to our electricity company or, or whatever. You just know how rubbish they're, they're not really chatbots, okay? So what I've done is created an AI tool which I've trained with my books, with my courses, with my webinars, all about marketing. And you can chat with Phil AI or Phil Bot, as some people are calling it, and just ask any question about marketing and lead generation and it will give you all sorts of ideas, all sorts of list resources and stuff like that. Completely free. It's on the other side of the business card to scan it and you go to fill AI. But let's just finish this off. Imagine if you had your own AI that was on your website, that a consumer comes along middle of the night for whatever time they come along, okay? And they don't necessarily want to get in touch with you, but they might just want a quick chat with you. You can have your own AI that is trained all about you, your expertise, your professionalism, trained all about your website, about on any articles or blogs that you might have written, and a consumer can chat with it, and they can get answers to their questions. So it's kind of early, it's not gonna give financial advice or anything like that, it's just gonna have an early, early doors conversation with you. But the really cool bit is, on the back end of this AI, you can see the conversations that people had with it. And you've got the contact details of the people who had the conversation with you, and then you, you, the human version of you, can follow them up and take it a step further. So technology can be a little bit scary sometimes, but when we start to we take a step back and look at it carefully, it can do really exciting things for us. Okay, please do grab a business card. There's one copy of my book there, the paperback, somebody can grab it, whoever gets to it first. But thanks very much, enjoy the rest of your day.